This is going to be a description of using the new quick draws, annotations, repeats, and color orders functions. In this particular case, what I'm starting with is a basic pattern out of a handwoven May 2021, page 36 issue. And it shows a fairly simple pattern in terms of program structure, but overlaying with an, an independent warp color order and weft color order. So I'm going to walk through how to do that with the new tools. First thing I'm going to need is a four shaft, six treadle with floating selvages. So I'm going to go back, set up, four shaft, set six treadles, floating selvages. Okay, so I've now got the basic structure set up. Okay, so I've now got the basic tie up set up. And the first thing I need is a floating selvage. So I'm going to click and bring in a floating selvage. I'm going to ask for the line tool. Each three, four. One, two, three, four, and I'm going to need two full repeats of that. So I've got that, and then the two, one, three, two, one, and I need two full repeats of that. Another floating selvage. can delete all this stuff. So I've now got the basic pattern structure, and then it wants to repeat basic pattern, ignore the floating selvages, so I'm going to catch that. Annotation times eight. Add that so I've now got that in there. If I want to, I could actually go through and, you know, a couple of threads at a time, add the same notes on hemstitch groups. And I could add those notes if I want to. I don't want to waste enough time here to do that. Just delete that again. Get out of the way. And I've now got the warp structure set up. Let me do the weft. Five, six, one, two, three, four. Two, three, four. One, two. Four, three, two, one, three, four. Three, four, three. Delete. Okay, so now I have the basic pattern structure. Now it wants me to add the repeats. So I'm going to go through. I want that six times. Right click to clear it. Six times. Add it two times on the next block of four threads. So I want a time six on the first two. Let me switch that to it. And I want a times two. That was a right click to clear it. And what I want to do is select. Mess that one up. So that four threads I want to do that two times so when I add that repeat get that one out of there so I've now got six repeats on the first two two repeats on the second block and two repeats on this block times two that's a repeat count and six repeats on the last two threads. Okay, the last two. Actually, I hadn't gotten the last two threads in yet. So I want to do six times that. Times six. That's another right clear to clear it. Plus, so I've now got those repeats. Now what I want to do is fill in the repeats on the middle. This is the next level repeats over the top of those. And that's going to be 60 times. Did a left click to select the box. And I can just add the zero since so it's already times six. So now I've got the times six, two, two, sixty, six. So I've got the six, two, two, sixty, six. So that all, all the repeats are set up. 
So I've got the basic structure of the pattern in place now. Now what I want to do is go, go ahead and open the color orders. And the first thing I'm going to need is some more colors. So when I ask, I'm just going to go ahead and add the six rainbow colors. It's the fastest way to get a few things in here. So now the color sequence I'm going to want, most of them are going to be in white. So actually what I'm going to do is first drag the white down to the warp color. And then I'm going to type the first block is going to be four. And when I hit the return, it's automatically going to add the next one. And I'm going to clean that one up later. Let me add the next one, 12. So I'm working left to right across this sequence. 12, 1, 3, 40, 3, 1, 12, 1, 3, 60, 3, 1, 12, 1, 4. So I've now got the basic colors. I've got the, the counts. Now I want to bring in colors. So the first th four threads are going to be white, and then the one there is going to be off the ginger, which I'll just call a red the ginger. Um, so there's a ginger. The next one was a yellow. The next one was another yellow. Back to the ginger, and then ginger and yellow in the bottom. Ginger and yellow. Now, the 40 ought to be the blue, or indigo as she's referring to it, green for the 60. It looks like I lost a 3 there, so what I'm going to need to do, I did not implement a means of inserting, so what I can do is drag them back. So I'm going to move them back over here. So I'm going to actually want to just use it, copy that three back in there. So that should give me the color order now for the warp, and that's a straightforward color order. Yeah. Now I wanted to find the weft color orders, so I want to start with twelve on the. First, one. oh, I just remembered I had that extraneous one over here I needed to get rid of. So on the warp color orders, the first one is 12. Get rid of that one. I've got the 12. 80, when I hit the return, it's going to add it. Three sixty three just one three three forty three one twelve one three one hundred and twenty and twelve. So now I have the color sequence in there. One th let me go through and add the colors to those. So that most of them are going to be white. So the first two are actually going to be white. The third one's white. And then we hit honey on the fourth one. So honey was the yellow. So that first one ought to be the yellow. Then the ginger was the second one. Ginger was the second, and that also drags down here again. Yellow, yellow, ginger, and I needed a lime on 60, and the blue on 40. So I've now got that basic color sequence now for doing a right mouse click to select it down to the 40. So I've got now this block of threads. Do a right click, 
times 7. And I add the repeat counter. So now, what one of the other things it's telling the structure identifies 162 warp threads. That's if I multiply these guys times 8 plus the floating selvages and multiply all these guys out at 1,224 weft threads. And you'll notice my counts here of 166 warp threads, 1,224 weft threads. So I've got most of the pattern identified. So the other question is where the 4 got lost. Let me slide this back over so I can recheck. So 4, 1, 12, 1, 4, 1, 12, 1, 3, 40, 3, 1, 12, 1, 3, 3, 60, 3, 1, 12, 1, 4. So I'm not sure where she didn't count the floating selvages or what, but I do have a couple of threads accounted for there that I don't in the warp threads. So let me double check the pattern. So at the floating threads, three, four, one, two, three, four. If I want to, I can change these guys now and it's not going to care. Four, two, one, four, three, two, one, four, three, two, one, and another floating solvage. I don't see the problem, so we'll ignore it for the moment. Right now, I've got the complete pattern entered. I've got the color sequences for warp, weft, as well as the structure blocks defined. So what I really want to do is five, save as, I'm going to call that as the handwoven May 2021 page, page 36. So I've got that pattern saved. And now, if I want to actually multiply that out, with a little moment, let me expand this guy. If I hit the expand button, the pattern is very large. Let me scroll back out as much as I can. I've got the green and blue big stripes. I can see the red and yellow pinstripes across the middle of it as well as the pattern structure and repeats are multiplied out. So in that one stroke, I've actually now, you know, in that one screen, I've got all of that information identified. If I wanted to print that, let me go to the print page setup. And if I look at the color order, print preview, it's actually going to give me Notice it's actually trying to print the whole pattern, which is kind of not what I really want here. So if I actually go back and undo. So I've now got the color order and the, the summary of the pattern. So again, if I do the file print preview, this time it's going to show me with the repeat structures. This is really what I want. This is a half page that shows me that whole thing. So it's going to show me the color palette, the color names. It's going to show me how many repeats on each one of the threads. It's going to show me the times 7 over here, which is that block 7 times. So again, when I look at this guy again, when I compare what my original pattern was, the same information that was here is now summarized onto this half page, so I can see that quickly and easily. And I can also expand that. All that information is saved in the file when I save it. So if I actually close that and when I reopen it, the same information is there when I go back in. I need to blow that up a little so I can see it. And I look at the color order. The color order is still all st stored in the file along with the pattern structure. So that gives me the ability to take that pattern out of the book and multiply it out and look at what's going on. Thank you now. Bye.